Mr. Tandon, broadly, what do you make uh, of uh, some of the allegations and counter allegations that have been made in the two letters by the Gangwal and the IGE group? Uh, good afternoon. I, what we are witnessing now is another boardroom brawl. Uh, and of course, sitting outside, we really don't know uh, with the uh, charges flowing uh, fast and furious between the two entities, we really don't know at this moment. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff. Having said so, I think if we kind of take a step back and look at uh, uh, the allegation, and I kind of first look at just uh, the fact that certain, some of the rights which are embedded in the articles of association of the company, I think it kind of does. It's not a situation which uh, retail and public or institutional investors should be happy with because what it primarily does is that pretty much any decision which is taken, whether it's the appointment of the CEO, or the CFO, uh, in a sense, in the letter, there is you know, even to the fact that how the chairman, though up independent, is uh, going to be appointed. It kind of uh, leaves uh, the governance structure of the company pretty badly bruised. And uh, if that indeed is the case, uh, uh, what our belief is, and it's something which we've been advocating for a while, that uh, some of the agree some of the clauses which are there in the shareholder agreement over the years have found their way into the memorandum and articles of association of companies. Uh, this is something which most of the law firms advocate. It, they believe that it kind of protects the interest of their uh, clients. But uh, from a perspective of the uh, institutional investor, from the perspective of the retail investor, from the perspective of all the uh, minority investors, I think it's a fairly debilitating uh, 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 practice. Uh, and therefore, we believe that uh, this is a wake-up call. Uh, we should look at what is happening with regard to the various uh, articles of association, and there should be a clean-up. Uh, coming, to, uh, coming back to, of course, that's the big picture. Coming back to this company, of course, uh, I think uh, at this moment it's a little bit unclear in terms of how much it will uh, impact uh, the operations. Uh, having said so, again, there are a couple of things we need to factor in. Uh, for the longest, uh, Indigo had enjoyed the reputation of being uh, the best on-time airline. Uh, that reputation has somewhat uh, slipped a little bit. While the planes are still on time, it's not uh, uh, the number one airline with this regard, at least as the newspaper advertisements. The second is that when you see what happened with Jet Airways, uh, Indigo remained a peripheral player in bidding for routes, uh, aircrafts, etc. Now, maybe the argument is that they uh, they are well kind of covered as they are, but it could be that all this is a distraction. The third is if they need money to grow, acquire new aircraft, expand their uh, fleet, then as long as there are these. Uh, the differences between the promoters. I think the bankers are going to hold back and not going to be uh, as open with their uh, checkbooks as they have been in the past. I, I'm sure the commercials will play out in the market, Mr. Tandon, but I do want to bring the focus back to the governance issues. How do you see this unfold going forward, given that uh, soon the shareholders might be presented with a resolution uh, that will emanate from the Gangwal Group, uh, which would suggest to Indigo's uh, board to put in place protocols uh, that will apply to all related party transactions? Sure, look, at this moment, uh, it's uh, too early in terms of how it will pan out. But I think there are uh, certain questions uh, which investors should uh, certainly engage with the management. First is, uh, it would be good to have a disclosure of the shareholder agreement. But if that is uh, on, not disclosed on account of confidentiality clause, at least the articles of association should be out in the public domain. Uh, it is not something which is available on the website, so it's kind of a little bit uh, difficult to get to. The second is there are uh, certain special rights uh, which are enjoyed by the LGE group, which is uh, Rahul Bhatia and his uh, affiliates. I think uh, there needs to be clarity in terms of whether they're going to remain or whether they're going to be uh, dropping off. Uh, with regard to this, there are third, there are charges again with regard to related party transactions. Uh, there is an ENY report. Uh, at this moment, we don't know what the scope of the ENY report was. Uh, um, again, while uh, the LG group has said they've been given a clean sheet, uh, Mr. Gangwal and the uh, RG group says that, look, it's really not uh, 
uh, as straightforward as being made out to be. There are uh, there are some qualifications, so it would be good to have uh, some of this put in place. Uh, you know, Tandon, I know you've would... said that it might be difficult to gauge what might happen, you know, going forward. But I'm just wondering how easy would it be uh, for the Bhatia group and the board to defeat this proposal of, uh, you know, prescribing a protocol for all RPTs, given that the language just seems to, uh, you know, suggest to up the governance levels. For instance, uh, the proposal says that RPT should only be entered if it's demonstrably and quantifiably in the best interest of the company. Uh, moreover, such RPTs RPTs should only be entered into after seeking competitive bids from qualified third-party vendors, etc., etc. Given the nature of proposals, how easy would uh, it be for the board or the Bhatia group to say no to them? Look, uh, first is that at least there was a request by the RG group to have a, a call for an EGM, which so far has been stymied by the IGE group. Now. Uh, I'm really not sure what whether it was a technical uh, slippage which was there because our sense is that if someone owns 36% of the equity, at least my sense is that if you own 36% of the equity, you have the right to call for uh, a shareholder meeting. Now, why it's not been done is at this moment not clear. And I think it's technical. The second is, look, it's a statement of good intent. No one is going to say that please don't uh, have a resolution uh, some of it is just housekeeping and, uh, you know, you would believe that a company of this scale and size would be kind of following some of the practices uh, which have which are being enumerated uh, in the resolution. But clearly, if uh, one of the uh, promoters of the company is saying they're not being followed, we need to kind of look at it a little bit seriously and understand that, look, uh, is it just to score brownie points at this stage or is there some genuine uh, missteps which have been taken. Uh, will a resolution like this go through? I think with uh, the votes and it's a statement of good intent, it's going to be very difficult for uh, even Mr. Bhatia to vote against it unless he kind of says that in a sense it's infractuous because I'm already doing whatever is here. Uh, did you find it curious, uh, Mr. Tandon, that the results of this EY report weren't shared, uh, which assessed the various related party transactions with the Bhatia group, wasn't shared with the entire board? And at this point, given the nature of allegations from the Gangwal group, can minority shareholders insist that this report be made public? Uh, let's uh, break it up into two parts. Uh, we, uh, I do think it should be shared with the entire board. Uh, uh, and that's the right the right thing to do. Uh, with regard to public, I'm a little bit wary of some of these reports getting shared because, you know, uh, there is a lot of uh, confidential information which uh, flows through uh, and therefore not knowing the exact scope, uh, what was to be covered, what was not to be covered, did they have access to uh, internal emails, or did they just rely on you know, verbal interviews, etc. That is uh, information which I'm not privy to at this moment. But uh, I'd say in principle we are, uh, I, I, in principle is a lot, but generally we are against, uh, uh, you know, uh, such reports being uh, put out in the public domain. Uh, however, if, you know, if you're able to quantify the, uh, the amounts, if they're kind of saying that, look, the company reported that the RPT is amount to about 220 crores, but if it's significantly larger than that and there's tangible proof that, look, it's not 220 crores, which, mind you, is a large enough number as it were, but different from what is being reported, if there is enough color in terms of the following were RPT transactions, they were masked and not reported, then certainly it would make sense to have much, a little bit more in the public domain than what has uh, been uh, uh, than what we've seen so far.